Once again, Holy Spirit, you are here. Take over. Minister to us. Enlighten us by the light of your word. Let everybody standing here today experience the light of your word. And let that give birth to the miracles we desire. Amen. So the name of our Lord will be glorified. And even those that are watching us on TV, let your light dawn on them. And let them receive that breakthrough, that deliverance, that healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Glory be to Jesus. You may be seated in his presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. So we are still on our subject of fruitfulness. We are still in our covenant month of fruitfulness. And I want you to understand that anything in God is delivered according to your faith. Anything in God is delivered to you according to your faith. And so faith is very, very important as far as our fruitfulness in God is concerned. And uh, from the beginning, we came to understand what Jesus said, that in order for you to bear fruit, you must abide in me and I abide in you, then you will bear fruit. So what that means is that we cannot bear fruit on our own. Until we are abiding in him and he in us, we cannot bear fruit. So the foundation of fruitfulness is the word of God. The word of God. That is the word of God dwelling richly in you. That, I mean, that is why the Bible says, let the word of God dwell richly in you. The word of God dwelling richly in us is what makes us fruitful in every area of our life. The word of God dwelling richly in you. Like I said last week, you cannot manifest what is not in you. That is one thing we have to understand. Until it is in you, you can't produce it. So he said, let the word dwell richly in you. Jesus said, you must abide in me and I in you. And Jesus is the word. So in other words, my word must abide in you. Before you will be fruitful, my word must abide in you. That is why it is very, very important for us to give serious attention to the word of God. Serious one. And this is individual responsibility. You must give serious attention to the word. That is the price you are going to have to pay in order to be fruitful. Because the word of God is also the source of all miracles. So when the word gets into you on any issue in your life, then miracle will happen. Because the word of God is the source of all miracle. Praise the Lord. And so faith in God is very, very imperative as far as our fruitfulness is concerned. Faith in God. The Bible says, for unto them was the word preached, just like it's preached unto us. But it did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith. So no matter what is preached to you, until faith is at work, you don't benefit from it. But I see you benefiting from God's word in Jesus' name. Amen. So faith is very, very important in order for us to be fruitful in the Lord in every area of our lives. And when we are talking of faith, faith simply means behaving the word. Faith simply means acting the word. Faith simply means living the word. Faith is not talking. Faith is acting, living, behaving. That is why the Bible says, show me your faith 
without works, and I will show you my faith by my works. For faith without works is dead, and anything dead can never be fruitful. So faith, or let me put it this way, the proof of your faith is embedded in the works in the way you live and the way you behave. That is the proof of your faith. And when work is attached to faith, then miracle is born. And so work, I mean, the works of faith is what proves our faith in God. It is not just, I believe, I believe, I believe. Uh, the Bible says the devil also believes. You believe, he believes. What's the difference? The only difference between you and him is that he cannot act on the word, so his faith is dead. And so the works of faith is what give birth to miracle. The works of faith. The works of faith. It is very, very important. The works of faith. It is heartbreaking to see how many people go to church on Sunday and no matter the word they hear, it does not affect them in any way. It does not affect their way of life. They are still living the same way they are living, doing the same thing, um, whatever they were doing. The word they heard did not profit them because faith is not there. And because faith is not there, they don't see the manifestation of the word in their life. A man of God said, if the word of God cannot change you, then nothing can change you. And so faith is not just going to church. Today we have a lot of deceptions going on. That makes people think that because I go to church, that means I believe in God. <laughs> uh, going to church does, has nothing to do with faith because the devil also goes to church, like I have been saying. The proof of your faith is only authenticated by your works. That's all. By your works, the way you live. The way you behave, the way you talk, things you do, that is what proves your faith in God. Glory be to Jesus. And until faith is at work, God can never show up, even if he wants to. That's the truth. And until faith is there, it is impossible to please him. So see as God's word. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. So one thing about us that pleases God is our faith. That is our walk of faith. It, it pleases him so much. And why is God so pleased with it? Because you haven't seen it but you are believing and behaving it. That is why Jesus said, blessed is he that has not seen, but believed. Thomas was like, hey, 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 you said what? You saw him? I don't care. Until I see him with my eyes. I don't want to see him in dreams or revelation physically until I see him. And even if I see him, I want to see the mark because I saw that, that name. I want to see the back before I will believe that he's risen. And so a few days after that, Jesus appeared. And he said, Thomas, uh, here, look into my arms and my side. And then he fell down, oh, my Lord. He said, Thomas, because you saw it, you believe. Blessed are those who believe without seeing so you see why you are blessed? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why your faith pleases him. 
How many of us, you know, were there when Jesus died on the cross? Physically, you were standing there. You saw it. If you were there, uh, we will call you a super Methuselah. <laughs> but we believe and we added the works to it. What was the work? You accepted his son. So God wants you to understand that everything you desire is possible, but it is delivered according to your faith. And faith is behaving the word. If I am sick and the word of God comes to me, the Bible says, he took my infirmities. I like the way Matthew put it. He took my infirmities. He himself took my infirmities. And Isaiah said, by his stripes, ye were healed. And I feel symptoms of sickness. Instead of becoming afraid and, and, and bowing to sickness, I say, no. I don't care what I feel. I don't care what doctors say. Let all men be liars and let God be truth in my life. He said he took my infirmity. Therefore, I cannot be sick. And so what I'm feeling is fake. Devil, I know you. You are a liar. In the name of Jesus, I cast the root of these symptoms of sickness by faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A child of God went to the hospital and she was diagnosed of cancer. When the doctor said it, he laughed and laughed and laughed until he fell down in the doctor's office. And the doctor thought, what's wrong with this guy? He said, uh, doctor, what did you say again? What, what cancer? Me? Cancer. He said, look, 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 look at it. He said, dog, I don't need to look at it. Me, I can never have cancer. Never. Now, that does not mean that the doctor was lying. Why? He was only refusing what he knows Jesus has taken away. I cannot have it. I don't care what your medical verdict, whatever it is. I can't have it. This brother came home praising God. Thank you, Father, you took my infirmities. And you said, all oh, men are liars. You are the only truth. Therefore, this report is a lie. Amen. It's a lie. And he kept praising God, praising God. He never told the pastor to pray for him. Two weeks later, he went for another checkup. No cancer. Amen. Faith with works. Now, I'm not saying that uh, if there are symptoms of sickness, don't go to hospital. Or what the doctor is telling you is, is a lie. No, the point I'm making here is that you are living your life on the basis of what Jesus has said. Praise the Lord. We thank God for medical doctors and nurses, but you see, they are only diagnosing what is happening to you physically. They can't diagnose spiritual things. And sickness is a spirit. Whatever is challenging your health in Christ, I curse it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Faith with works. The Bible says, he became poor, that I might be rich. Listen to me, church. It is not money that makes you rich. Are you understanding me? It is not money that makes you rich. It is your acceptance of what Jesus has done concerning your prosperity that makes you rich. So prosperity starts from within. Until you begin to see, until you can see yourself the way God describes you, it will never materialize in your life. I told somebody, give one million dollars to somebody who thinks he's poor. 
and go. Come back the following year. You come and meet him poor. Are you understanding me? Because the Bible says, whatsoever a man thinketh, so he is. You are not according to what is in your hand. You are according to what you think. And so if I want to make somebody poor, I don't need to take his money from him. All I have to do is to convince him to think that he's poor. And all money he has will leave him. That's all. Because scriptures can be broken. Whatsoever a man think, so he is. So the enemy is working on people's mind. That is why the Bible says, casting out every imagination that exerts itself against the knowledge of God. Casting it out. If it's not in line with scripture, you don't entertain it. Cast it out. Because the enemy will want to, you know, make you look at yourself as a poor person. He wants you to look at yourself as a sickling. He wants you to look at yourself as somebody who is underprivileged. He wants you to look at yourself as, like the world called it, third class citizen. I haven't read it in the Bible anywhere. And as long as you see it like that, nothing will change. So prosperity starts from within. And that is why Peter, by the spirit of God, told the church, in case you don't know, look, let me change your perception about yourself first. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Now, do you read poverty in this one? That has been called by God unto glory to show forth his praise. Changing their mentality about themselves. And so if you believe that you are a royal priesthood, where are the works? If you believe it, you will behave it. If you believe it, you talk as such. If you believe it, you walk as such. A royal priesthood, a holy nation. I am set apart unto God as a holy person by the holiness of Christ. If you believe it, you walk as such, you talk as such. You cannot just do things because everybody is doing it, because of who you are. The reason why people are in church and they are doing all kinds of things everyone is doing is because they have lost their identity. They don't even know who they are. They think Christianity is just being a member of a church. You are a peculiar person, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar. Your kind has not been seen before. May the Holy Ghost help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Behaving it. Behaving it. Behaving it. Behaving it. Behaving it. And so when you are driving, There are many common people on the road. And so you are driving as a peculiar person. Law abiding citizen. And a common person just does something foolishly. Crosses you and all kinds of things. And, 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 and he has done the wrong thing, but he turns around to insult you. And then you also break. Come out. Hey, my friend, what, what do you mean? What are... Why do you have to let somebody make you come on? If you are conscious of who you are, peculiar people don't fight. They don't fight in the street. They don't react to the foolishness of other people. They comport themselves. No matter what you say, God bless you, and he moves on. Now, the spirit of the devil will make you feel you are foolish. He will make you feel, ah, you are a coward. You are afraid. That's why you didn't show him that you too, you are a man. He just wants to make you come on. But because of your faith, 
in God, knowing who you are, you are behaving it. You believe it. You are not faking it. That is who I am. Praise the Lord. He said, you are a royal priesthood. Even the royalty of the world knows that they are royal. They, they, know, they know where to go and where not to go. Now, supposing you went to McDonald's to buy some french fries, and you saw Prince Charles sitting there eating. You say, ah, he looks like him. This can never be him. He only looks like him. Oh, this guy, you see that guy eating over there? He looks like Prince Charles. And your friend was like, ah, look, that's him. You say, ah, are you out of your mind? You mean that's Prince Charles sitting here? That can never be him. Now, is it a sin to sit there and eat? No. But why is that strange? Because he's a royalty. And this is how we are grieving the spirit every time. A lot of people in the church have lost their identity. So we behave anyhow. A lady was, uh, I think she borrowed money to uh, another lady. And uh, she said it's been over two years. The lady doesn't want to pay the money. And so one time she was determined to get the money. And uh, she went to the lady's place. You are giving me my money now. Look, don't think because I'm a Christian you can walk over me. This one I'll put Bible aside. I'm taking my money now. <laughs> Say, God, help me. You'll be surprised. Why all this when we are talking about fruitfulness? <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. God said there are a lot of people that are supposed to be bearing fruit, but because of their attitude, because of behaviors, because they have lost their identity. That will never happen to anybody in this commission again. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So now let's come back to the fruitfulness. <laughs> and like we have already said, faith in God. Faith in God. Believe in it. Believe in it. Believe in it. If Jesus said, you abide in me, I abide in you, you will be fruitful. So the first thing is believe it. Believe that you are fruitful. Never ever consider yourself unfruitful again. Because whatsoever a man thinks, so he is. Believe that you are fruitful. God is going to work with you and work with you and work with you and bring you in, bring you in, bring you in until you find yourself in a place where you have become a tree that many bears are benefiting. Many people are blessed because of you. But it's not something that is just going to happen overnight. God is building us in. God is bringing us there. So believe it and now let's walk with him. Let's obey him. Let's obey the demise of the covenant. Because we are a fruitful vine. And so we, God is, you know, when we talk of fruitfulness, you know, it begins with planting, germinating, growing, and then bearing fruit. And so some of us, we are at the stage of planting. Some, we are germinating. Some, we are growing. Some, we are just about to hit our time of bearing fruit. But in whatever stage you are in, you are on your way into fruitfulness. Praise the Lord. And, and Jesus said, we must abide in him, in the word. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. That means that it is God that causes us to be fruitful. Praise the Lord. And because it is God that makes me fruitful, then I must desire to know what it is that make God bless me 
with the spirit of fruitfulness. What is it? It's very, very important because, you see, in the kingdom of God, everything is by the Holy Spirit. Everything. Everything. As a matter of fact, everything is by grace. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. And grace is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit we call him the Spirit of grace. So everything is by the Holy Spirit. We can't do anything in the kingdom without him. That is why Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. And so accept the fact that on my own, I can't do anything. But with God, everything is possible. So I need God to walk with me. I need God with me. I need to walk with God. So I must know what it is that will make the grace of God for fruitfulness physically materialize in my life. And in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, and verse number 24, Ephesians chapter 6, and verse number 24, the Bible says, Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Grace be with all them that go to church every Sunday. Is that what is there? Sometimes how we wish God would change some of the things he has written. Because if God put it that way, that would make it simple for everyone. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus in sincerity. You are not faking it. Grace. And we are, I mean, the quality of a man's life is dependent on how much grace is at work upon you. And grace be with all them that love Jesus Christ in sincerity. Say a big amen to that. Amen. So, love for God becomes the major platform for fruitfulness. Love for God. Love for God. And this is another area multitude are deceived. They think by going to church and dancing, you are in love with God. It is good to do that, but uh, uh, uh. loving God is, 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 is something that when it happens, you know. It's just like when a man falls in love with a lady. Are you understanding me? When you meet a lady you love her, you fall in love with her. You, you don't fake it. You, you, the love is there. And then the love compels you to do some things for her. Even if it is negative 50 and we have 30 inches of snow on the ground, you will walk through, you will swim through the snow and you won't feel any cold because you are in love. You want to see her. So, just like faith without works is dead, love without works is fake. Love has proofs. And grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. So, what is love? Jesus made it very simple for us here. In the book of John 14 and verse number 21. He that has my commandment and keepeth them. He it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. This is where fruitfulness happens. He that has my commandment. And keep it them. He it is that love me. He has my commandment and then he lives with it. That is the person that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. What does it mean? The manifestations of the word of God. 
God manifesting his life, uh, his word in your life, for you to become so fruitful, and your life will become a proof that the Bible is true. But it only happens to those that are in sincere love with God. Praise the Lord. And love has proofs. As a matter of fact, the authentic proof of love is giving. That's all. Love is the, I mean, giving is the authentic proof of love. God loved the world. He didn't sit in heaven and sing. He gave his only begotten son. He so loved the world that his only precious son, he can let it go for sinful man. Proof of love. And so love is not in singing. It's not even in church attendance. Love is in your dedication, devotion to God. He that has my commandment and keep them, he is it that loves me. That is, you joyfully walk in obedience to his word. You joyfully live by his word. You, it, you are excited doing it. You bless God even for the opportunity that you can live by his word. Love. 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 When you are truly in love, it propels you to do things that other people will not do. They will not understand you because they are not in love. That is why even in the church, there are people that are so committed and other people in the church look at them and say, hey, Abba, is the church your father's church? The, you know, something is constraining you. Something is preparing you. There is something in you that pushes you. And you do it with joy because you are in love. Glory be to Jesus. So when love is moving you, you know. That is what I've been saying here. That please, whatever thing you are doing, if you are nagging, if deep in your heart you are reserved, stop it. Please, stop it. You can't bluff God. Stop it. Amen. God will not receive such thing. It is waste of time. If it's money, it's waste of money. That is the truth. If you are not in love, stop it. But it, my advice is that you make up your mind to love him because you lose nothing loving him. You rather gain everything. Loving God does not add up anything to God. It rather adds up to us. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Very, very important. He that has my commandment and doeth them. The problem in the church now is that many people are in the church, but only God knows how many love him and are really living by his word. But we have to understand that when it comes to bearing fruit, fulfilling your glorious destiny, it is on the platform of your heart for God, your love. You come to a point where you are not even concerned about yourself. It's all about God. You are practically living for him and his kingdom. Then he said, I will manifest myself to this person. And remember, Jesus is the word. So in other words, the word will manifest in your life physically. Everything he's saying will manifest in your life. Everything. And so one thing we, we have to know is that God comes into the midst of the congregation, but he looks into our individual hearts. That's all. I said it the other time, God is everywhere in the world, but he does not manifest himself everywhere. The same goes with the word. 
The word is preached everywhere, but it does not manifest in everyone's life because of the condition of our heart. That is what determines it. So don't, don't be satisfied with just going to church, but make sure you are loving God to manifest him, to manifest the word, to manifest the word. That is where fruitfulness comes in, to manifest him. Because he has said, that say you to the righteous, it shall be well with him. The righteous shall flourish like the uh, tree of uh, the, the seed of Lebanon. You know, it is fruitfulness all the way. But uh, is, it, is, it, is it manifesting in my life? If it is not, then let me find out what I need to do that I'm not doing, what I need to know that I don't know. Because God is not a man to lie, and God is no respecter of persons. So it all depends on me. The heart for God. The heart for God. The heart for God. One dangerous thing that Jesus said that we have to be, we always have to consider is what he said in the book of Matthew 24 and verse number 12. That and because iniquity shall abound, the love of money shall wax cold. And you know scriptures can be broken. Iniquity shall abound. And because of that, the love of money, many, the love of many for God will wax cold. And listen to me, church, this is the truth. We have a lot of people in the church that are in love with things, not God. A lot. A lot of them are in church. The, works of, the love of many will wax cold because of iniquity. Because of the sinful activities that the devil will introduce into the world, it will affect the love of money. I mean, uh, uh, the love of many in the church. The devil has introduced all kinds of activities in the world, and it is beginning to affect some Christians. Because of it, so we, we, uh, 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 in order for us to, to grow in love for God, we have to be aware of this. So it does not affect you. It won't affect anybody here in Jesus' name. Amen. Iniquity shall abound. Same things now sin. Unfortunately, we are living in the time that sin has become a hallmark of civilization. That is why even in the church, all kinds of things are going on there and it is accepted. A young man of 60 years can introduce a lady at 15 as a girlfriend. And the elders of the church, oh, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. No sense of guilt because it is accepted. Because iniquity shall abound. The love of money. Many shall wax whole. Say God forbid. forbid. Church, the spirit of God is about to catapult us onto a, a, a dimension where we will just be swimming in the glory of God. And that is why he's opening our eyes to these things to set us free so that we can take the flight. Praise the Lord. The Bible did not, thank God he did not say the love of all. He said many. Make sure your name is not added to this man. Praise the Lord. I love them that love me. So says God. No, sometimes we say the love of God is unconditional. Yeah, praise God. The love of God is unconditional. The general love of God is unconditional. He loves everyone. But the love of God that brings you into greatness, there is a condition attached to it. I love them that love me. Proverbs 8, 17. I love them that love me. I love them that love me. I love them that love me. And what is the love of God? They that has my commandment and keep them, they are those that love me. 
They are those that love me. They are those that love me. They are those that love me. They are those that love me. A man of God said, if 30% of the people that go to church are walking in love with God, Jesus would have returned. <laughs> he would have returned. But my prayer is that this Holy Ghost commission will consist of people that love God. Amen. People that sincerely love the Lord. Say a big amen to that. Amen. That is why you are a sign and a wonder. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. You know, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse number 5, Jesus, uh, God gave us a very straightforward instruction or commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. That's a direct commandment. You will love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Now in the New Testament, somebody came to ask Jesus, which is the greatest commandment? He said, you have read it. First, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, whatever you have. That is, he said, this is the first and the great. And then second, love your neighbor as thyself. So we're considering the first one. This is the first and the great. Loving God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Now, how is that humanly possible? How? With all our shortcomings and limitations and infirmities, how is that possible? He said, by my spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, let me tell you one of the good things you can do. When you go before God in prayer and fasting, Father, empower me by your spirit to love you. Lord, I choose to love you. Empower me by your spirit to love you. Anoint me to walk in sincere love without reservation with you. Because it is humanly impossible. <laughs> All your soul, your mind. <laughs> ah, say help me God and then the same Deuteronomy 19 and verse number 9 he said if thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them which I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk ever in his ways thou, then shalt thou add three cities more for this beside these three if thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them, which I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God and to walk ever in his ways. So the only proof of love for God is walking, obeying him in his ways. And when you do that, loving God, that's what? Add up to us. He said, then shall thou add these three more, these three cities more for, for thee, beside these three. So in other words, you are already bearing fruit, and as you keep walking in love, it keeps adding up. That is all. You will ever, forever walk in his ways, forever. It's not uh, I walk in it, one week and then the, the, the following week is I'm on my own. That is why I said it the other time here. You got born again to live for God. So don't, don't confuse people with your born again. You got born again to live for God. That is it. That is, that is all. You, you got, that is why when we got born again, he gave us his nature. You got born again to live like Christ. You got born again to live for him, obeying him. So he will do his works through us. Praise the Lord. So all these commandments, loving God with heart and all those things, Romans 13, 10 makes us to understand that love worketh no evil to his neighbor. 
Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling. So, you see, when God's, the Bible says we should love God with all our heart, all God is saying is that he is making everything simple for us. Once you fall in love with God and you start working with him, you have fulfilled all the law. Sometimes you see people sitting down trying to learn the law of Moses. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not this, thou shalt not this, that. Uh, why, why do you want to live in the Old Testament? They tried it, nobody could obey. And Jesus came and summarized everything, love. Praise God. Praise God. Just, just, just fall in love with God. Just love God. And love, when you love him, you will automatically walk in his word. You will delight in walking in the ways of God. And by so doing, you have fulfilled all the laws. So you don't need to bother yourself to know thou shalt not this, thou shalt not that, that. No, 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 no. Don't put yourself under all those headaches. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Because love worketh no evil to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Are you understanding me? The reason why love fulfills all the law is that it will never work or think evil of his neighbor. No matter what anybody does. As long as your, the Holy Ghost is spread abroad, the love of God, and you are walking in it, you can't think evil of anyone. People are doing you wrong, and you are loving them. You are wishing them good. You are praying for them. All this attitude where somebody does something wrong and you wish something evil happens, it's not God. It is not God. No matter what you are doing, let love flow and see what happens. Because when we are loving, I keep saying it, you are not doing the person you are loving good. You are doing yourself good. You know why? The Bible says God is love. Praise the Lord. God is love. God is love. First John 4, 8. He said, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. God is love. And who made us? God, right? So in other words, love created us. So everything in you, your brain, your heart, your liver, your kidney, the blood, the vein, the, everything in you was equipped to love. It came out of love. It was created by love. So when you begin to hate, you are doing what your system was not equipped to do. That is why you fall sick anyhow. You are destroying your system. It is just like trying to use a microwave as a refrigerator. You mess everything because it's not equipped for that. So love made us, we were created by love. And when you love, you know, when we talk of long life, it is on the platform of love. You want to live long? Love. Just make up your mind to love and ask God to give you the grace. Love God with everything. Live for him. You are not losing anything. Live for him. And when you are in love with God, automatically it flows to your neighbors. Automatically. When you are truly and sincerely in love with God, it flows to your neighbors. Praise the Lord. May God deliver us today from anything that makes it hard for us to love him. Amen. Say a big amen to that. Amen. A lot of people are suffering from all kinds of sicknesses because of bitterness, grudge, ill feeling, unforgiving spirit. They are, you know, when these things are you, you yourself is not even a happy person. Haven't you experienced that? You are not even happy. If you like, try bearing grudge with somebody and wake up tomorrow morning, see how you feel. No matter how bright the day is to you, um, the phone call, hello, hello, who is this? You understand? But when you are flowing out of love, you wake up and the first person that sees you, even if the person has a problem, your facial 
uh, this thing alone, expression affects the person. The, the beautiful smile, that, that, that glow of love that is oozing out of you, the person sees it and, oh, hello, brother, hallelujah. And the person is sick. You know that all of a sudden he's fine. Love, love, love. The power of love can never be overemphasized. That is why God says, just live in love. Just love. Love made you, so you are a son of love. Therefore, you cannot exhibit anything but love. Praise the Lord. Say it. I'm a child of love. First John 4, 18, the Bible says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. He that fear is not made perfect in love. So the only thing that opens the door for the spirit of torment is fear. And fear is there because love is absent. When you are truly in love with God, you don't fear anything. You just walk with God, obeying him. Because you are so much in love with God, and God so manifests himself to you, and that makes you bold in the face of everything. And so there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And we have said that love, or the Bible says love, you know, the proof of love is in your obedience to God, obeying God and all those things. You know why a lot of people can't even serve God with their substance? The fear of tomorrow. Hey, wait, you mean if we give all, what happens tomorrow? Please, as long as you are in that realm contemplating, my advice to you as God's servant over your life is that don't give that money. Don't. Don't, if you do it, it's like you have thrown it away. That's the truth. Don't give it. As long as you are holding it and you are shaking and all these things is going on in your heart and what if, what if, what? <laughs> Wait until love is at work. Because when you are doing it out of love, you don't care whether you will not eat tomorrow. Because of your heart for him. That is why I told you like a man who is in love with a woman. He can swim through the snow and he won't feel the cold. Because he's consumed with the heat of love. Oh, it happened to me before, so I know. Praise God, I know. I covered about uh, 34 miles on foot. And it was like uh, 200 years. Because I wanted to see my love. And the guy is broke. No? In Bible college at that time, no money, and I have to, I want to see her. I started my journey. I don't know where the strength came from. Praise the Lord. But later on, I realized that it was love. Amen. So if we can do that for each other, then when it comes to God, you have to understand. Please, when love takes over, all this what if, what if will vanish. And my prayer is that God will empower us with the spirit of grace to really walk in sincere love with him. Loving God with all our mind, all our soul, all our strength, and everything that we have in love. Because loving God is our highway into the realm of fruitfulness. It, that we don't lose anything loving God. We rather gain everything. Because there is nothing you and I can add up to God. No matter what you give to God, it doesn't add up anything to him. God is already God. It rather add up to us. And that is why it is my prayer that God will give us the grace to walk sincerely in love with him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so uh, those of you that might be watching us on TV and uh, those of you, whether you watch, listening to the CD, watching us on the net, the only reason why man has problem is that man has stepped out of love. That's all. Love made us. Everything 
in us was equipped to love. Now we are doing all things that we were not equipped to do. And so man is having problems, all kinds of sicknesses, mental problems this, mental problem that. You know, you know um, last Monday there was this uh, medical, whatever, this thing on the, on the, on the you know, on radio, that talking about the causes of mental illness and all those things. Yeah, fine, we thank God for their diagnosis, but you see, we understand better. Amen. Amen. We understand better. When man is out of love, anything can happen to him. Anything. Anything can happen to him. I mean, think about these young guys that will pick a gun and go about shooting and all those things. Now, what do you think is going on there? You know, but once they come to Christ and the love of God enters into them, do you think he'll take a gun and kill? Never. So when love is not there, anything comes. That is why the Bible says torment is what you expect. It will never happen to you again in Jesus' name. Yeah. Shall we stand up to our feet? So those of you watching us, the journey of love begins with salvation. Because God is the God of love. And until you accept him, you can never walk in love. And so if you're watching us today and you are not born again, you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the one and only true child of God. All you need to do is to accept him. He is love and he is the gift of love. If you will accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior today, I promise you his name, that Jesus will turn things around in your life. Therefore, any one of you that wants to accept Jesus, just pray this prayer with me. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for bringing your word of love to me. Thank you, Father, today I acknowledge that I'm a sinner, and I know that I believe that Jesus died and rose again for me. Therefore, I come to you, and I ask you to forgive me all my sins, and I accept Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior, I confess Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I thank you, Father, that you have given me the opportunity to be born again. Thank you that I am born again. My name is written in the book of life. And I pray that, Lord, fill me with your love and help me by your grace to walk with you and love you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.